welcome to this tutorial and before we start kindly subscribe to my channel like the video and share it with your friends in this video we are going to solve Cambridge IGCSE mathematics paper 2 extended variant 21 October November 2018 question number 16 onwards question number 16 so this is an uh, angle in parallel lines question the diagram shows an isosceles triangle ABC with AB equal to BC. AB is equal to BC. Therefore, the opposite angles will also be equal. So this angle is going to be X. We have also been said that LCM and BCN are straight lines. And LCM is parallel to AB. So BCN cuts the line AB and LM. It's a transversal. Angle ACL is 56. Find the values of X and the value of Y. Because these two lines are parallel, we can find out angle BAC. It will be 56. If your uh, angles form a Z like this, so this angle will equal to this angle. The reason being alternate interior angles are equal. Therefore, angle BAC will equal to angle ACL. That will give us 56. To find X, you know that the sum of three angles are equal to 180, right? Therefore, 56 plus X plus X is equal to 180. 2X is equal to 180 minus 56. And x is equal to 180 minus 56 divided by 2. 62 degrees. To find the value of y. If we draw this line here and cut it, y is equal to 56 plus x. What is x? 62. And why is y equal to 56 plus x? Because it's a vertically opposite angle and vertically opposite angles are equal to each other. Whenever you have a cross like this, the opposite two angles are equal to each other. And this angle will be equal to this angle. Therefore, y is equal to 56 plus 62, 118 degrees. Question number 17 is indices or exponent questions. Question number A. t to the power of x multiplied by t to the power of 2 is equal to t to the power of 10. You need to know all the indices rules before we begin this question. Let's just go through the rules of indices quickly. Anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. When you are multiplying two indices and the base is same, you add the powers. If it's a divide, you subtract the powers. And if it is a bracket, you multiply the powers. a to the power of negative m is equal to 1 over a m. Or if you want to convert a to the 1 over a m to the, uh, just in the form of a numerator, when you bring it up, the power becomes negative. n over m, whatever is in the denominator goes outside. And whatever is in the numerator will be the power of a inside the radical sign. So in this case, we have multiply. It means we are going to use the second rule. x plus 2 is equal to t to the power of 10. The t's get cancelled. Therefore, x plus 2 is equal to 10. 2 bring to the other side, it will be negative 2, x is equal to 8. Part B, you have a negative here and there's a bracket with a numerator and the denominator. To make the power positive, we are going to flip over the inside numbers. That makes the power positive. So this will be x square and 4 square. 4 square is 16. Remember that no matter what question it is, if there is a bracket and you have terms inside, the power is for each term, whether in the numerator or in the denominator. Part 
2 a to the power of 3 and b to the power of 7 divided by so we have a divide question here we are going to use the third rule we can only divide uh, using the same base so 3 minus 6 and what about b 7 minus 2 this will give us a to the power of negative 3 and b to the power of 5 we do not leave the negative we will bring this down it will become positive b to the power of 5 over a to the power of 3 question number 18 is a simultaneous equation question we have been given two equations and the first thing to check is the coefficient of x and of the y in equation 1 and 2 are they same in equation 1 a coefficient of x is 2 in equation 2 coefficient of x is 5 they are not the same and even the y is not the same so the first thing we'll do is make the coefficient same of either x or y I'm choosing x at the moment so if I want to have the same coefficient I will multiply the top equation by 5 and the down equation by 2 this will give us 10x 5 multiplied by 3 15 y and negative 12 multiplied by 5 is negative 16 5 multiplied by 2 10x 2 multiplied by 2 is 4y and 14 multiplied by 2 is 28 if the signs are same I want to eliminate x but 10 plus 10 is going to give us 20 and I want to make it 0 so I need to subtract when I'm subtracting I have to change signs for each term okay so this will get cancelled and 15 minus 4 will give us 11 negative 60 subtract negative 28 will give us negative 88 remember we use the top sign and the new sign that we have we do not use the previous sign negative 88 divided by 11 will give us negative 8 now that we have got our y we need to find our x you can substitute in either of the equation I'm substituting in equation 1 substitute y is equal to negative 8 in equation 1 therefore 2x plus 3 multiplied by negative y sorry negative 8 will give us negative 12 minus 24 is equal to negative 12 bring the negative 24 to the other side it will be positive 24 2x is equal to 12 2 multiplied by x so therefore when we bring the 2 to the other side it will be a divide x is equal to 6 so x is 6 and y is negative 8 question number 19 use the quadratic formula to solve the equation 3x squared plus 7x minus 11 is equal to 0 you must show all your working and give your answers correct to two decimal places this is the quadratic formula that we use to uh, solve the equation we need to identify our b a and c a is the number before x square always remember before x square they may write the terms in not proper uh, position you need to arrange it and find your a b and c b is the number before x 7 and c is the constant the number that does not have an x it's a four mark question only you memorize this and you will get your four marks so b is negative 7 plus and minus square root always put a square a is 3 and negative 11 is c the whole thing over 2 multiplied by a which is 3 now solve step by step write the square root put this much in the calculator together and write the answer will get 181 over 2 multiplied by 3 6 
Now you have two values of x. x is equal to negative 7 plus square root 181 over 6. And the second value is x is equal to negative 7 minus square root 181 over 6. We have to round it to two decimal place. This will give us 1.075. So this is the second decimal place. If the number after what you want to round is 5 or more than 5, we add 1. So this will be 1.08. And here we will get x is equal to negative 3.4089. Second decimal place is here. And the number after that is more than 5. So we add 1 to the number, negative 3.1. So the two numbers are x is equal to 1.08 and x is equal to negative 3.41. Question number 20 is a matrix question. Matrix is not a part of your syllabus from the year 2020, so we can skip this question. Question number 21 is a graph related question. The y-axis is the value of investment and the x-axis is the number of years. Let's read the question. When Edi was born, her grandfather invested some money in an account that paid compound interest. The graph shows the exponential growth of uh, this investment. Use the graph to find the original amount of money invested. So here is the original amount and that is going to be two, uh, 20, sorry. Each, uh, this line is 20. So the original amount invested was 20. A2, the number of years it took for the original amount to double. So the original amount is 20 and it doubled. It means 40. How many years did it take? It took 14 years. Next question. A3, the value of the investment after 54 years. 54 years is this one we'll just go up mark the point and find the value of investment which is 280 dollars part b this account on compound interest at a rate of r percentage per year use your answer to part a1 and a2 to write down an equation in terms of r you do not have to solve your equation this is the compound interest rule. Principal is your starting amount, which is written as P. Rate of interest is R. Interest is equal to I. And years is N. And amount is A. So amount is equal to P, bracket 1 plus R over 100 to the power of N. We have to use part A1 and part A2 to write down the equation. 20 was our original amount, so that is our P. P is 20 and time is 14. It took for the original amount to double. So the final amount is 2 multiplied by 20, which is 14. The only thing that we don't have here is R. Now we can substitute A is equal to P 1 plus R over 100 to the power of N. T or N we can write it as. So amount is 40. 2. Uh, uh, principal is 20. 1 plus R over 100 to the power of 14. And we don't have to solve the equation. So this is the answer. Question number 22 is a probability question. A group of 200 people were asked in which city they would like to visit next. And this is the table that shows the result. A person from the group is chosen at random. It means anyone, there's no particular format for choosing the person. Write down the probability that this person will visit either Paris or Tokyo. So this is Paris and this is Tokyo. We are going to add them together. 48 plus 46 and divide by the frequency. What is our frequency? 
total number of people which is 200 and we will have 94 over 200 which is 47 over 100 part b two people are chosen at random from the group of 200 find the probability that one person would like to visit london next and the other person would like to visit new york next give your answer as a percentage so it could be that the first person chosen wanted to go to london and the second person wanted to visit new york just uh, london is l new york i'm putting as an n or it could be the other way around the first person chosen wanted to go to new york and the second person london what is the probability of london 50 over 200 what is the probability of new york 56 over one person has been removed from the group of 200 people so how many are remaining now 199 and new york is 56 over 200 again as one person has been removed london will be the same 50 but over the total 199 this will give us 0 0.1407 whenever we want to find the answer as a percentage we multiply by 100 so 0 0.1407 multiplied by 100 will give us 14.07 you can leave it like that or round it to one decimal 14.1 percentage question number 23 we can see it is a function question we have been given three equations f of x g of x and h of x let's start with the first one h of 3x is equal to k to the power of x so h of 3x means wherever there is x in h we substitute it with 3x in place of this x here we will write 3x is equal to k to the power of x in indices when we are solving we need to remember that if both the sides are equal the powers are also equal so if we make 3x equal to x it the x will get cancelled and we will be left with 3 to the power of 3 is equal to k that is 27 is equal to k part b find the value of x when f of x is equal to g of 2 f of x is 7 plus 3x and g of 2 we are going to replace the x with 2 that will give us 16 therefore 3x is equal to 16 minus 7 3x is equal to 9 x is equal to 9 divided by 3 which is 3 next question find the inverse of f of x the inverse of f of x so first thing in place of f of x we will write y and our main concern here is how to make x the subject so y minus 7 is equal to 3x this is a multiply when i bring to the other side it will be a divide after you make your x the subject make it alone in place of x we will write f inverse x is equal to and in place of y we will substitute it with an x x minus 7 over 3 so f inverse x is x minus 7 over 3 this brings us to the end of this tutorial i hope i've been able to help you if you need any help with any particular year or topic do mention in the comment section thank you for watching